You have to provide your own orcs. All right, let's get started. So fantasy cartography, for those who don't know, uh, is a pretty widely popular genre of map making. Uh, people make alternative history maps, um, completely made up worlds that just look awesome. Uh, and there's somewhat of a paradox in fantasy cartography. It's a fantasy map, so you can do literally anything you want with it. Uh, and it's your imaginary, imaginary world, and you can make things work however you want. But people like realistic fantasy maps. Um, one that they can imagine might actually exist. Uh, they want to immerse themselves in your world, and it's hard to do if it's too different. Um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Saw some weird slides there. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my mouse? <laughs> what do I? Okay, anyways, we'll keep going. Uh, so they want to immerse themselves in your world, and it's hard to do if it's too different from reality. So it's one of the biggest challenges of world building and fantasy is striking that balance. And uh, some of my favorite maps have been fantasy maps, and some of the first maps that we all use are fantasy maps, like in books or games, like Lord of the Rings or the Elder Scrolls. And, and when I was using these, I really wanted to make fantasy maps. And then I got into map making, and I was like, this is so cool, I can do this. Uh, but it's hard when you suck at art. Um, <laughs> and I don't suck too much, I'm pretty good. Like, I can get the head right, uh, self-portrait, by the way. Uh, I always mess up the body. <laughs> Um, but anyways, I knew I wanted to make cool fantasy maps, and uh, once I got into actual map making, I thought it was going to be easy, and I was wrong, so very wrong. Uh, I drew this when I was younger, and so when I was drawing this a couple days ago, um, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just knew it wasn't good. Uh, one of the biggest pitfalls of fantasy map making is creating realistic coastlines and also putting things in places that make sense. You can see I obviously used a brush of a certain size um, around the coast, and that river flows from one ocean to the other, like rivers do, right? <laughs> um, and um, so sure, fantasy maps can be whatever you want, but again, you want to balance between what's real and what's fantasy, um, and you want to make it realistic. And so if you really want to make it realistic, then why not just use real world data? Um, and that's what I did. Uh, I'm part of a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, not to brag or anything. Uh, and we needed to make a map, and I was like, this is perfect. I had this idea, let's play around with it. So I made this, and um, then I added some map magic, Bob Rossed some um, water bodies into there, and turned it into something that I'm proud enough to submit to the map gallery this year. Um, but it all starts with that basic landmass and making it appear good. Uh, so. And all you need is just a DEM. And you're going to think, this is like, wow, this is really easy. Why is this guy giving a talk on this? Uh, <laughs> so first, we'll just start with loading a DEM. I did it in QGIS. You can do it in any GIS software. Uh, I picked Ireland. Uh, but you can pick anywhere that has a landscape that you might want to mimic in uh, the world you're creating and the map you're building. Um, and then you just changed some symbology. So I just uh, changed it to color presets and made one uh, just for water and land separately. Uh, and these two values are going to represent water and land. Um, and then I, I changed, what I do is I just change my minimum uh, value of whatever my DEM is to the water and the maximum to land. And then is, this is where you can just play around with it. So we see here, and it looks like you're just flooding the world, and you are. Um, this is Ireland, uh, flooded, and I chose, uh, and then you just play around with that value, and so I chose like 112 and found some cool land masses, and so uh, the funny thing is about my fantasy map is it exists on Earth in Ireland, kind of. So I zoomed in on this one, I'm like, that's the one, really cool, and then all you do is export it, and there you've got your land mass, and the basics to creating the fantasy land masses, that's it. Um, but you don't have to be done there. Uh, I took this, I made it into polygons, so I had some vector data on it. Uh, and the one rule about fantasy cartography is that there are no rules. Um, and you can conform to or diverge from whatever you want in making uh, a map. Uh, and so you don't like the way it looks, and you just rotate it. And then add some of your own personal flair. Uh, I did a partial Huffman here and added some water lines. Uh, took it into Illustrator, changed some of the colors. One of the coolest things 
though, is that you have real world data for your fantasy world. So if you're like a world building nerd, this is like, ooh. <laughs> um, so I made like contours and hill shades and watersheds. And, no, I didn't make watersheds, but you can. That's what's cool. Uh, just slap a name onto it. Um, and you can run all of these analyses and make it look cool. Um, I toned it down a little bit, took that off, contacted my dungeon master and was like, we need some names. So we went online, found a fantasy name generator, slapped those bad boys on there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then you just use you know, your cartographic preferences to find a good balance to match what you want. And you've got yourself a fantasy map. And uh, shameless plug, it's in the map gallery. Um, <laughs> but that's it. And so that's how you make uh, a fantasy landmass from real world data. Thank you very much. All right, I see a hand in front of the projector screen. Daniel Loveman. <laughs> Blinded by the light here. So we uh, we talking like fifth edition D and D or like three and a half? What we're doing is a, what we're doing is a, uh, a hybrid three and a half and fifth edition. You just pick that's that's what you do. It's like no rules to fantasy stuff. You just like pick and choose what you want. So yeah, it's a hybrid between fifth edition and three and a half. Thank you. <laughs> I see you rolled high in your charisma stats. <laughs> Question for Kate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm this is weirdly related to my talk tomorrow. Um, uh, not to name drop that, but my serious question is, um, you've obviously done this with natural landforms, but have you played with urban city grids at all um, or how you might emulate that from real world data? Yeah, I have not. Um, yeah, I suck at art. And um, did I mention Did we work that? on a remote campaign together? <laughs> yeah. Roll20.net. See you on there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think there's some really cool things as well that you can do. Um, there's some online generators that do like generate a city and there's shows buildings and like they have water land for, you know, things going around there and stuff. But yeah, I think that'd be super cool and interesting to see if you can kind of adapt real world city structures. I'm also interested to see uh, Mesa's uh, whole series of... Uh I'm interested to see a whole D&D &D campaign where there's 20 cartographers and we've all made our own maps and how that will work. So Nasus if anyone else wants everybody. to join. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. So like a campaign in, in Dungeons and Dragons. No, it's okay. That's a, that's a good question. Um, I just uh, didn't think... Anyways, yeah, uh, I'm just showing my nerdiness. <laughs> yeah, um, you just set up like a, a campaign, which is like a story, and uh, everyone plays as a different character and goes through it. And um, you can have a series of stories, and that, that's what kind of turns into a campaign, uh, is that, and then there's a world, a fantasy world, and you abide by like these rules and structures, and you're laughing. And <laughs> no. Yeah, anyways. Next year, we really need to have a D&D campaign in ASUS. Um, are there any more questions? OK, one more. Vanessa. Um, I recently joined a D&D &D group as well. And <laughs> I guess this is more of a comment and more suggestions relating to this. Um, I naturally said, I think this needs a map when we were playing, because it was a lot of moving around and discussing things and mm -hmm. never knowing what we were doing visually. So I started drawing every time we played. Um, and possibly a future interesting thing would be to show like the different spaces along the routes of the campaign, if that was like yeah. What's concept. what's interesting is we've done <laughs> we did the campaign first, and so like we already had this story and kind of like a rough map that my my friend drew, and then I wanted to build an actual map using this technique. Um, so it's weird that like we already had an idea of some things of the world. So then I looked for an island that might match that. And so we actually haven't played with this one yet. Um, I also uh, volunteered to draw monsters. So if you guys want to draw monsters, join D&D. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This has been D&D's Anonymous. And <laughs> Thank you, Ross. <laughs>